I call to order the workshop meeting of the City of Aransas Pass City Council, uh, March 13, 2019, at 5.30 p.m. And the item on discussion is by Mayor Ronnie Parker, Mayor of Ingleside, regarding proposed San Patricio County desalinate. I will hire a Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Ronnie Parker, Mayor of Ingleside and everything. Uh, we, we've signed a MOU back in, I'd say, October, November with Poseidon uh, Desal people and everything in Ingleside and everything. Uh, they had worked for the city of Corpus Christi for four or five years. Uh, Corpus kept wanting to do studies, wanting to do studies, wanting to do studies and everything. Desalination, y'all know, it's needed. I mean, we've got all this industry coming in here and everything else. I mean, this industry could be using 20 million gallons, 30 million gallons, 35 million gallons. So it's it's a, a necessary for us in that aspect. Brian Williams, I, I met with him, and uh, he, he tried to get a local bill passed, and, and I talked to him about it. I told him, Brian, I'm not going to support your local bill as long as you're bringing Corpus Christi over on this side of the bridge. We've had enough problems with them with the boundary disputes and everything else and, and all that. We, we don't need them over here to, to help us take care of our business. They, they've got business over in Corpus that they don't do a good enough job to take care of. So they, they need to get, stay over there and take care of theirs and let us take care of ours. Uh, Brian can, still says he, he's going to uh, partner up with them as I understand, he's going around to the different cities around San Patricio County and trying to get everybody to sign a resolution to support his desalination plan. Y'all, your own people, and everything. If y'all choose to do that, that, that that's y'all's opinion, and everything. I, I would ask that y'all don't. Uh, what we're trying to do is Poseidon's going to come in. It's not that plant's not going to belong to Ingleside. That plant's going to be a regional desalination plant. It'll belong to San Patricio County and all the cities in San Patricio County. Uh, everybody hollers, well, why are you going that way? And everything, because it's a private indemnity. Yes, it is, but they've got the backing, they've got the knowledge, and they've got the money to build that plant and everything. And within 30 or 40 years, all depends how many customers they get and everything, that plant will be turned over to San Patricio County. We'll have the voice on that plant while they're running it. We'll have the voice on it after it's turned over to San Patricio County. The people in San Patricio County, not people from New England County. We'll partner up with them. We'll sell them water if they need it for their industry or whatever in that aspect, as long as we have plenty of reserves. Corpus is talking about coming over and building a 10 million gallon a day plant is what they're talking about building. Of course, I'm sure it's going to be expandable to some aspect. Uh, they, they never had said, what what determines the plan is the size of the suction, the size of the discharge. They can always build onto it and add membrane back into it and everything. What we're planning on is a hundred million gallon a day plant. And I feel like that, that plant will service whatever industry we have coming into it, our area, everything in that aspect. I'm, I'm not asking y'all to do a resolution or anything else at this point in time, but if we could bring you all the information you need on it and everything and show you exactly where it would go, what it would do, and how the contract would be drawn up. I can tell you that, because I asked him, I said, I need no roundabout figure. I don't need exact what is this plant going to cost us to build. They said between 400 and $600 million. So it's a big investment, but it's a, it's a good investment for our coastal area and everything. If we're going to be an industrial area down here, we're going to have to have the, the water for this industry. We're, they're still supposedly trying to work with Brian because any, any water treatment plant or water plant period has to have backup. Very much so. And everything. So that's why they're working with them hard in that aspect. 
because if one plant goes down, say a tap water plant would go down, they have carcass pushing water to them over here. Our water pressure would go way down, but it was it would still be better than nothing at all. And that's why they're still trying to work with pride in that aspect. But the plant won't be from Lewis County. The plant <coughs> will be from San Patricio County. I don't want to take no more of y'all's time and everything. I appreciate y'all having me here. And as soon as I get some more information, I'll come back and see y'all. Okay? Thank, Thank you. you. Who did you say was going to build the plant? Did you give Poseidon? us a name? Uh, Poseidon. 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 Okay. Name the company. Yes, and where are they out of? They're actually with the they, they build a big 60 million gallon a day plant out in California. Okay. And it, okay. At, at Carl okay. Mad, California, okay. and everything. And you can pull that up online and look at so it. So that's who built that aspect. one. Okay. I'm not sure. Uh, the Their vice president came down and talked with us, and she was actually out of Boston. Mm -hmm. So I, the, the, they're tied to a big investment firm up there is where, where their, okay. their money comes in from and everything. And uh, – so did you contact them, or did they contact They actually contacted uh, us and everything. We were, they got tired of keeping on doing the studies, and Corpus is still doing studies today okay. and everything in that aspect. I can tell you this. Poseidon has gone to Austin already, has filed uh, paperwork with the Water Conservation uh, Board up there and everything else, and, and they're, they're doing all their homework, and, and they're, they're spending money right now trying to get this thing going. And we're just waiting for one of the industries to approach us and, and guarantee that they'll they'll have furnished water to them. And then they'll actually start filing for all the permits and everything else. Okay. So. To but like, actually, everybody would split the cost to get to build it or what? The, it will not cost us anything. That's why they'll own the plant. They'll own the plant for 20, 30, 40 years, however long it needs to be owned by them. We'll we'll have people on their board not running the plant, but supervising over the plant and helping them. That's what our MOU was, is just basically to help them find customers here in that aspect. Of course, they're going to make money. If it costs them $400 million out of their pocket, they're going to pick up another $100, 150000000 million for financing and everything else, just like any other business person would in that aspect. Mm -hmm. okay, but but uh, no, they'll do all the finances itself in that aspect by settling up with a city or, or cities that allows them to go into and, and make it a, a private public uh, contract, contract with and everything that aspect and, and that's what helps them with uh, TCEQ and all that up else and everything and the workings of it. Uh, and the, re and the reason I, and the reason they're coming up with these plants is to try to make up the difference in the water for well the, for for industry. the industry coming here and everything right now the only thing we furnish from is water that we get off the mare road pipeline or off, off the, the lake the and everything and, and you know yourself when we get in the drought they're, they're, they're on water restrictions mm -hmm. so whenever you had a hundred million gallon days worth of industry over that's going to be in this area what was there guaranteed that they can furnish water to these plants I mean, they can't guarantee our citizens the amount of water that they need during drought time. Mm -hmm. And that's without the industry being on it. Do you know what our that's current it. use of water is? Do you know what our current use of water is? No, ma'am. Do they know what our current use of water yes. is? Yes. They, 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 they've done all the, all the paperwork and studies. And when it comes down to that How point, long have they been in the area? I did, I'm sorry. Besides, they, they, they've actually was working with Corpus for four or five years. And everything they've been down here uh, for probably six years now. Everything in that aspect. Once it gets closer, that that, that they'll come down and and talk to us as a whole group, explain everything to you before you ever make any commitments or anything else. All I'm all I'm trying to do is is make sure that y'all know we have a regional plant coming here that we don't have to depend on Corpus Christi to furnish our water for us. I've got a meeting uh, with ILB on the 19th of this month. And, uh, Mayor Zapparini over in Gregory spoke to me, meeting with me. I'm not sure, real sure what Portland's doing. The, the mayor seems to think that they want to stick with Brian Williams, and that that's their prerogative in that aspect and everything. You know, but, okay. but 
but when it comes down where it's getting closer in that aspect and I'll, I'll give Jerry or Rama a call and tell them, you know, when we could all meet together and possibly and have them come down and, and talk because they can go in a lot more better detail. Yeah, because there's a lot of information that, a lot needs, of information to that needs to be answered before we, I think, that we could approve anything like putting yes, a name on something. Yes, No, I agree with that. I agree yeah. to it all. Uh, of course, yeah, I'm not sure whether y'all know it or not, uh, the port was talking about putting a desal over across from Port Aransas. Well, yeah. Port Aransas gave them so much know. grief over that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That they, they decided they wasn't going to do that. So now Carpenter's going to go over, uh, or the port's going to go over and build a oil terminal over there. And I, I think that's not going to do too well either. So. Yeah, <laughs> just about that, it's going to come right through. <laughs> but if y'all need anything, y'all can lo locate me in Ingleside. And as soon as it, we get something closer, I'll get the fighting people down here and uh, we'll all get together if y'all like and have them give us a, a full detailed yeah. description of it. I think that's what we need to do. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to go to presentations and there's special recognition of Jeffrey Burkhead, interim crew leader for utilities, Jaime Gonzalez, utility technician one, and other key personnel. Let me begin this if I may. Sure. recognitions that you're talking about. Um, a week ago today, the, um, the leak that you're very familiar with was located. Two weeks ago today, uh, the uh, uh, leak began, or we found the leak. Um, and so it was, it was a leak for us for one solid, almost exactly to the hour, one solid week, uh, from um, uh, February 27th until March 6th. The purpose in today's meeting and today's work session is to report to you, the council, on what happened during that week-long period. And to the best of our ability, uh, report on why it happened. Also, um, under why it happened, want to talk about old infrastructure that's out there uh, that is a major issue in the city and why we're correct and how we, you, the council, and, and staff working for you are taking steps to correct the old infrastructure uh, issue, uh, infrastructure that's been with us for a while that has not been addressed. Um, and uh, what is being done to address future leaks also. If a leak happens tomorrow, or let's say a week from now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, uh, Quite a few days. Yeah. Uh, what position will we be in to correct that uh, more quickly? Um, there are ways to improve, uh, also want to talk about ways to improve communication. Found out that was a major issue in this. Uh, and want to talk about ways to improve that and what happened during last week's uh, leak uh, in the area of communication. Something that uh, is so important, and we found this out during that week-long period, and that's partnerships. Uh, we partnered with Aransas County on this. Uh, we partnered with other cities, and we found people coming from all over to help us uh, with this problem, which what ended up being a major problem. Uh, and uh, want to uh, give uh, special kudos uh, to uh, uh, to uh, uh, Jack Haley uh, of the um, commissioner uh, of Aransas County. Uh, he was very instrumental in coming up with ideas and we, when we had our planning session how we're going to address this, uh, he was in on that meeting as, as commissioner uh, and came up with some very good ideas um, and one of which was very instrumental in helping us find that leak. So partnerships were very important. Um, also, want to uh, before I get to the recognitions, I uh, want to point out a major issue in something like this. Going back to my, and I don't talk about this very much, I try not to, my old political days. Uh, when uh, you have a plan in place, and uh, it's very important to follow that plan, be open to uh, uh, flexibility and changing here and changing there uh, when necessary, but uh, during the height of, uh, of uh, a, a major problem such as that, you're going to get 54 different uh, suggestions on how to address the problem, all of which are well intended, 
all of which carry a lot of merit. However, from those old days of mine, I remember if you stay on course, be open to flexibility, you will win. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's important to stay on course on something like this. And, and I really want to thank you folks. You folks have been backing us on something like this and helping us stay on course also and uh, not pulling us in different directions. But if you follow those 54 different directions, you're fragmented and you get nothing accomplished. And uh, we stayed on course this time. Uh, all the uh, crew members you see here and others came up with a plan and we began eliminating the different options we had and to, it, it beginning to worry because we're down to about two options toward <laughs> the end uh, but they worked and uh, and the different options uh, were in place for different locations if it's here we'll do this if it's here we'll do this and we got to an area that uh, this particular option uh, required us to follow a certain path uh, and we did, and it worked out. So just want to point that out and thank you for uh, backing us on something like that and understanding what we're trying to do uh, and staying on course, but be open to different ideas at the same time. There were so many people uh, that uh, worked with us and were so instrumental in our staff and outside of our staff also, uh, who helped accomplish the goal of finding that leak. And uh, two of the people, I uh, want to uh, give some recognition to, and there are others that for, uh, Fernando wants to recognize also. But the g gentleman who found it was Amy uh, Gonzalez, uh, but uh, Jeffrey Burkhead was instrumental in leading the effort out there uh, and uh, showed the leadership that's so necessary in an emergency like this. And uh, I think uh, 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 Amy was uh, interviewed on TV, gave a very good interview, by the way. I uh, saw <laughs> parts of it later. Uh, and then uh, uh, Jeffrey, as I said, his leadership was so instrumental. And what, ask them to stand up if, if, if you can. Uh, and these gentlemen uh, were key, as, as everyone in this room, uh, key in helping us resolve that, uh, that problem as, uh, as, soon as, uh, as soon as possible. So thank you, gentlemen, and greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like uh, Fernando to then Take it from now, from this point on, as far as the presentation, I'll step in every once in a while, uh, but also other recognitions also. Yeah, and with that, I want to also recognize Shane and uh, Ryan, they were part of the group that was out there. We had one more person standing, wasn't able to make it tonight, but these five guys were the ones that are out there and make that leap big. Uh, we had crews from Corpus on standby ready to come in, and I asked, do you need the help? They're like, we can do this. So they handled it, they did it on their own, and I'm very grateful for that. They got it fixed in another 25 minutes. It's not just for this one instance, they constantly, since that water leak, we've, they've done five leaks already that have happened that you don't hear about because they get them fixed immediately. Uh, unfortunately, this one was a major one that was hard to find, but they've already done five other leaks since that leak. So um, oh, just wow. to show that they know what they're doing and they're out there getting it done. Thank you. Thank you. I want to start off uh, with a little brief summary of when we noticed the issues and the chain of events that led us to finding and fixing the leak. Uh, we had noticed on Tuesday night they were out on, on D Bay working on another leak. Um, and we we're getting starting to get calls of water pressure issues. So Sid and myself went out that night for three hours in the fog, driving through alleys with flashlights, walking, <laughs> could not find anything. Um, we finally gave up the search. We were still maintaining our pressure to be above the requirements for TTQ. So the next day we came in um, full force, hit all the alleys again, walked the, all the locations. We were concentrating on the north side because we knew the issues were on the north side where the pressures was, were dropping. Uh, we were able to find two small leaks that um, we wouldn't have found otherwise. Uh, they, those got fixed. It still didn't solve the issue. Um, by that afternoon, uh, TCQ uh, came in uh, and helped us. They were helping us look for the leak as well and monitoring our pressure. That afternoon, uh, around 6.45 is when they made the call for the water boil because it dropped to 17 PSI at City by the Sea and our requirement is 20 during emergency situations. So that's when we had the call, contacted Gary. We 
put the paperwork together, send it out, and push it on social media. Um, from that day forward, we started concentrating on the north side because we knew that's where the area was. Uh, the guys started walking the actual ditches all the way to City by the Sea from from Moore Avenue. Um, first step, we all the calls we had gotten were on North McCampbell, Young, and City by the Sea. So we knew that that's the area that was affected. So we pulled up our maps, found the two valves that, there's two lines that feed City by the Sea. One on uh, Business 35, one coming off of Moore. So right away we, we found two valves there, shut them off. The minute they did that, our pressure stabilized. So that total already from their point to City by the Sea is where our leak is at. Next step, we went out uh, to City by the Sea and we reopened those valves, shut the one at the entrance of City by the Sea, no effect. So we knew that the issue was still closer. Came back to the railroad tracks, still no effect. Um, when we came back to the intersection of Moore, the pressures went back up. So we narrowed it down from Moore to the railroad tracks. Um, that Saturday, uh, Jeff, uh, another uh, employee and myself went out. We borrowed a kayak from Ms. Carey. We appreciate you helping us out there. Uh, those ditches were six foot of water, so walking through them was kind of rough. Uh, so we ended up getting a kayak. Uh, the guys, uh, every 10 or 15 feet, they would take a sample of water and drop uh, what we call pillow packs. And if they turn pink, that means there's chlorine in the water. Um, we walked the entire side and we narrowed it down to two, between two power poles where we were getting chlorine levels uh, coming up fairly high. So. We continue narrowing it down. Um, Monday, after the meeting with um, uh, Gary and, and Commissioner Janey and, and the crew met at, at Public Works, they started working on uh, putting in a valve. Uh, so they ordered the, the, the valve we needed. During that time, uh, Jeff and the IT department went out there to influence their drone uh, overviews to see if we can find something that way. Um, on Tuesday, the city of Corpus came by with their drone with the thermal imaging and flew it as well. Uh, we were hoping that since it was cold outside, the water coming out of the, the lines was gonna be warmer. Um, it was not. Uh, the issue we had is that the leak was shooting downwards, not upwards, so it wasn't visible from the top or from the ground level. Uh, once the valve arrived, they installed it uh, on Tuesday night. Uh, around 9.30, as soon as they closed that valve uh, and opened the rest up, pressure stabilized. So we knew it was from that point now to the railroad tracks. So we were narrowing it further down. The next morning when they went and started messing with the valve, I guess, uh, with the pressure going up and down, they finally made it evident where the leak was. And it was within 500 feet to 600 feet of the where the valve was. Wow. Um, and I guess Jaime was the one was when he was walking through there in that portion of it. He's the one that noticed that there was bubbly coming up. and. Sure enough, when they got closer to it, they saw just a big old hole where it had just been shooting downward. Um, and then at that point, we knew what needed to be done. They ordered the clamps they needed. Um, and like I mentioned, in 22 minutes, once they had everything on site ready to go, they got it done. Um, and we were able to pressure it back up. Um, the minute we knew that the leak was being fixed, we had staff already start doing flushing and sampling. So as soon as TCQ gave us a green light, we can send the samples in and get that lifted. So uh, that was another key thing that staff did. By the time TCQ told us yes, within the hour, we had all the samples up into the lab. And the next morning, uh, we had gotten the all clear from the lab, but we had to wait for TCQ to come run, run one more pressure test out there, make sure, and that's when we were able to lift it. So um, that was kind of the line of events. Um, uh, I guess, uh, like I mentioned, finding the leak was as a result of that valve. Uh, it being so close to it and with them shutting it on and off, the pressure was able to kick it enough to make it more evident and the staff was able to find it. Um, and then from that point, uh, able to fix it. And by the end of the day, it was covered up and like nothing had happened. <laughs> but um, Fernando, on the, um, as we were saying earlier, um, old infrastructure. Yes. Um, and you said earlier they were out working on leaks uh, prior to and even today. and. Um, is is that a major issue that we have to deal with, and how are we dealing with that? And yes. this goes back years. This yes, it goes back years, and like uh, our latest maps we have of our infrastructure are, are since 1983. Um, so, a lot of the time finding some of these lines too is difficult because they're not documented. 
Uh, we've been working now with the GPS unit that we have to survey anytime we go out and pick up new stuff. Uh, we mark it on a map when we find new stuff and a lot of the valves are old and they don't shut properly and that's another issue we had out there. We try uh, putting air into the line to see bubbles. The air was escaping underneath those valves and uh, I know the food coloring uh, uh, suggestion came up with those valves leaking the water, the food coloring where they kept running through the line and you never would have seen it. It would have been enough to concentrate in one area to see it. Uh, and that's why that didn't work as well. So there was different options that were tried um, and by process of elimination we were finally, with putting that valve was the one that ended up working for us. But um, throughout the city our system is old, it's outdated and it just really hasn't been paid attention to in, in a long time. And now that we're not running on, on a constant pressure and pumps kicking on and off, it's making more evident because we're having failures. Um, uh, this one, it turns out it was an old connection that had made there had failed. That's what happened at this leak. It wasn't done properly and um, it caused it to come apart and fail and just burst open. So uh, now we're making sure that everything's in, done properly. They're not just putting a Band-Aid uh, fix on it, that they're being done correctly. Um, the Wilson is one of the issues I know y'all been getting calls on that why is it open, why is it open. That 12 inch line is one of those old lines and that's the main line that feeds from the water tower. We've had three or four breaks on that line. We finally shut it off. They replaced it completely now. Uh, they actually covered it up today. Um, and as soon as they finished covering it up, they just got a call that it, there was a break further down from it. So. Oh, yeah. uh, it's a small break which a, a, a <coughs> simple clamp will fix it. Uh, but that whole 12 inch line has been replaced to new PVC line uh, so that when the new water tower comes in, we won't have those breaks occurring as soon as this kicks on because that's going to be where the main pressure is going to be coming out of. Um, and that's why that's taking a while. They were scheduled to work on it that week of this other leak and since that one wasn't affecting anybody, everybody was, uh, that was put on hold and we're moved over to that one. But um, we are working uh, with our CDBG grant funds. Uh, we've identified seven possible projects most of them are storm uh, because our storm is also in bad shape. We do have a sewer project on Wearing Lane uh, where we're having issues out there. And then we're looking at um, hopefully doing an I&I &I, uh, fixture on our manholes. Uh, we have a lot of old brick manholes where the bricks have fallen and groundwater seeping in and it just causes problems. Those bricks also wash into the line, cause blockage and then cause sewer overflow. So with this uh, funds, we're hoping to do uh, liners on all those brake manholes, as many as we can, uh, so that we can avoid that from happening and hopefully avoid us having any two or overflows as well. So little by little we're trying to address it. We are putting money aside now every year into a separate fund for infrastructure repairs so that we can start replacing a lot of these water lines because we still have a lot of two inch uh, steel lines that are, you probably have a pinhole of water coming through there and if it feeds several blocks. So that's not even up to standards anymore. So we're looking at putting a, a plan in place to start replacing it every year little by little. Um, and that's some of the stuff we're looking at right now to make those repairs. Have you identified where we have those two inch lines? Yes. Do you have a good? A lot of it's uh, in the triangle area. Okay. That's a lot of the original town site area mm -hmm. and they have old lines in there. We have some off of D Berry going towards the levee. Uh, those dead ends mm -hmm. are all two inch as well. So you're certain that all of them have been identified so we can just have some yes a plan we have some numbers already okay. and, and and part of our comprehensive plan calls that out already we put that in there that uh in so many years this is what we're going to be addressing okay. have you identified how you're going to how you're going to start the project or where are you going to start on that part have you gotten that far i'm just asking my and on the dead end ones mm -hmm. i want to right now they're in the alley I want to move this to the front of the street okay. so we can put hydrants because there's no hydrants out there either and that helps our ISO rating sure. and fire protection mm -hmm. and I actually want to loop those lines um, so that there's circulation there and there's no dead ends there so we don't have to worry about flushing them every month so that the water uh, quality remains good. Mm -hmm. So for that's that part that's what we want to do. We have some up in uh, Owens, Benoit and those are all dead ends too. Um, and it's, we have the right of way there, it's just a matter of connecting those three lines in the back. Uh, so that would be an easy one as well. And then of course the triangle one will be a little bit trickier because there's a lot of population there. Um, they are in the alley. 
Um, so I don't know if, if they'll do a lay a line right next to them, and then once once the line is complete, uh, switch, over. switch over so that we don't interrupt service to the residents until the day we're going to switch them over. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's going to take a lot of coordination because there's a lot of utilities there, and that's going to be a little bit more complicated. But um, we have identified those areas as well. So we're in a position uh, because of FEMA, because of CDBG, because of uh, grant or, or uh, bond dollars we have out there and other grants, the uh, Colonia, mm -hmm. for example, uh, that all that work is it's underway right yeah. now. It's, uh, it's not a matter of being uh, just being planned. It is underway at this particular point. Another question is, uh, what, if, what if a leak happens tomorrow? Some equipment you're looking at, is that correct? Yes. Uh, well, first when this leak happened underwater, hard to find, and we've had two of these. Uh, one was over by Bay Harbor. Um, we were trying to figure out how can we see or identify a leak if we can't see it. Um, and talking with McCallum, which is one of the groups that was going to help us out, they have a, an, a piece of equipment. It's just a simple rod with that sends out a radar signal underneath the ground. You probe it, and you have the earphones on, and it can hear the water rushing out. Um, We've gotten some pricing on it, and we're looking at purchasing one for the city. It runs around three thousand four hundred dollars. Uh, it's not that expensive for no. what we, we use it for, and um, so we're looking at that right now, getting enough quotes so that we can proceed to to purchase one, and that will help us in situations like this where we can't find a leak. Probing, we know where the line runs, just walking along and probing it and listening into where the leak is at, and that would help us identify it a lot quicker instead of trying all these options with valves sure, and stuff because sure. the issue with the valves too is like I mentioned before if they're not closing properly if you think yeah, you closed it and water's still leaking through you're not it's not gonna yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's one of the pieces of equipment we're looking at right now too that's awesome any Go other ahead. I'm sorry no go ahead no no I have to say any other questions before yeah. you sure you're about to ask something <laughs> I was just going to say your guys did a great job. You know, even the people in City by the Sea, even though they weren't real happy about the whole thing. But they weren't really they, mad. They yeah. weren't. Yeah. You they were still, out there they remained very the positive in yes. yeah. the whole thing. I mean, they were, they were, they were sensible about it. Yeah. And we were and really trying the, hard. I think the, uh, I know we're going to discuss in the next topic, the communication, you know, mm -hmm. getting the word out. And mm -hmm. I know that, um, you know, different, you know, citizens have approached me. I said, are you signed up to receive? No, we're not. So, you know, I really am stressing that they need yeah. to, you right. know, log in and so they can get the alerts of what's happening, you know, on that part yeah. for themselves. You, you can't, you know, you get upset because you didn't know. Well, you take, take advantage of what's out there to help you stay informed mm -hmm. of what's yeah. happening. That's right. Yep. We don't like these things to happen, but they do, unfortunately. And so making sure our citizens are aware of what they need to do to stay informed. Yes. You can't make them do it, but at least they've been given the information at that part. Yep. Is there anything else that you need that you possibly can let me get that list. <laughs> no, I think it, uh, just continuing to hiring the qualified staff, and I know we're still short staff, but we're taking the time to really uh, to interview the, the staff coming in and make sure that they're qualified and that we know they can do the job because, I mean, we don't, just, we don't just want a warm body out there that's going to take up space. We need someone that is actually going to take the best interest of the city and, and do all they can to make this repair. So, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's been helping us out a lot. Like I said, we're short staff, but we're getting more work done now because the guys that we have are actually committed and they're, they take pride in their work. So. Good. Yeah. Any other questions for Fernando? If not, I'd like to uh, jump right into the communication issue. Uh, and that was, it was interesting, actually. Um, and uh, when all this started, like on um, uh, Wednesday night, Thursday, and uh, Friday, the uh, responses on face on uh, social media were extremely negative. Uh, and uh, more negative than I've seen in a long time, for very good reason. Um, they simply, the people who were uh, uh, giving those comments, many of them uh, simply did not know what was going on. Uh, and so we started then a process of um, not hourly, but uh, at least a few times a day, putting uh, an update on Facebook. 
And then TV was very helpful also in uh, getting the word out to uh, the citizens here. Uh, and that led me to the uh, a very clear conclusion uh, that uh, we need to be doing a, a better job at uh, on emergencies like this. Uh, it's not a hurricane or anything of that sort, so sometimes you're not really equipped to handle something under the magnitude of a Category Four hurricane. Uh, you don't uh, you don't think of the importance of communication in something like that, and it's just as important. We found out, um, and uh, after again after we started that process, it flipped. There was a complete flip as far as uh, uh, the 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 tone uh, that was on social media after. Um, after they uh, saw the updates, after they saw the reports on TV, um, and uh, that leads to word of mouth, uh, and uh, it, there was a complete turnaround as far as uh, the, um, the attitude and the tone that was out there. Not 100 percent, it never will be, uh, but I'm just emphasizing the importance of constant and honest uh, communication. What Vicki just said a few minutes ago in getting the word out as far as reverse 911, for example, that is critical. Uh, that is a beautiful piece of communication uh, uh, that we could use uh, even more effectively if more people had it uh, to uh, get the word out on issues such as this. And so that tells me we will be doing a, a more aggressive uh, campaign. Uh, in not only in the newsletter, but what, and that is worth uh, a, um, uh, a utility bill insert just for that alone, which I don't think we've done yet. Uh, so um, uh, that's something that we're going to um, uh, be emphasizing, and that is that sign up for the reverse 911. Uh, um, so a lot more needs to be done, uh, but uh, it's clear uh, if we do a better job, um, if I do a better job, of uh, communicating and honest communication and frequent communication, uh, it's appreciated and in fact comes out as a positive. So that's the goal uh, as far as communication goes. A need to uh, do the reverse 911, uh, a, a, better, a better job at uh, getting people to sign up for it and uh, keeping in mind that no emergency is too small. Uh, and we need to uh, keep the citizens informed and social media, TV, um, and even weekly newspapers, when they come out at the necessary time, um, are going to be very helpful to us. Uh, so that's what our thinking is as far as communication goes. And wanted to pass that on your way and, and like to hear your thoughts on that also and what you saw as far as the communication process uh, during, this, uh, during this whole, which I think was a very good exercise for us. I mean, I exercise really is, is probably not the right word. But it, it was an experience that we learned a lot from mm -hmm. uh, in planning, in, uh, in communication. Uh, it was something that uh, I think we advanced several steps forward in all the areas we're talking about now because of what happened. And uh, we saw some real heroes out there. And they were under pressure, a lot of pressure. Um, and uh, they performed very well, our people, Fernando's people. Uh, and um, uh, learned a lot. Communication is one of those, but would like to hear what you have to say and, and your observations and any suggestions you might have also. Well, I think you did a great job because so I had probably eight people that every time you updated something, I sent it to them, including Martin over at HGB because he was like, how much yeah, more water do I need? Where are we? You know, the, and so he appreciated all those updates and the other people were all either in City by the Sea or right there, and they all appreciated those updates because mm -hmm. it was the only way they were really getting, they saw the bits and pieces on the news and stuff, but getting the updates every couple of hours and then going out there and seeing them working, they were all very positive mm -hmm. about it after it after the initial shock of it. Mm -hmm. So I think you did a, a fantastic job. I just think we need our own TV station here, and then they can just turn <laughs> it on and figure out what's going on. <laughs> You know, that, you said something there which I, I was quite impressed with, and that is I went out there, and there will be a picture in the upcoming newsletter on this, uh, but it was a major operation out there. Mm -hmm. We had drones in the air. We had people on the ground. I mean, people come in from other towns. It was a major operation. It was like a military operation. Oh, yeah. uh, we had traffic backed up for a mile, literally one mile, as trucks backed in, as they, as they uh, uh, 
uh, built the berms that were necessary to isolate certain areas. Um, and everybody worked together quite well on that. So I'm, that's a good point as far as uh, what was going on out there. But I digress a, a little job. bit. So. Anything else on communication? I don't want to keep you guys any longer. No. Nope. Good job. We will. Good we job. can do better. And um, <clears throat> kudos to uh, Fernando and his team. They're the heroes in this, and our partners in all of this, Aransas County, and the other cities, uh, and you folks. Uh, you backed us on this, and we appreciate it. And we'll let you down if we don't learn from this and uh, grow from this. So. Well, the thing is, if you're giving us the information, we can post it on our own Facebook pages and keep getting it out to everybody else and word spreads and spreads and spreads so it does come from you and we have to, we appreciate that thank you well it's everybody but thank you very yeah. much so. that's all mister yeah all right anybody else that's it. well i just one thing i've said this before and i'll say it again public works they're the unsung heroes of Aranda's past we're yeah. lucky to have y'all yes. Yes. Yeah, thank yes. you for everything yes. thank you very much yeah. okay i'm off my soapbox now okay <laughs> Well, I make a motion that we adjourn. Sure enough. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.